that your spirit will come alive in our hearts, Lord, that, that we will sing praises to you, Lord, that we will that we will hear your word preached, Father, that we will that we will just draw near to you, Lord, and that you will that you will evoke the, the truth in our minds, Lord, that we will see you as you truly are, that we will turn away from ourselves, Lord, and turn to you. That we will not think about the troubles and the worries of our, our our lives, Lord, how we can solve them, but we will place them at the feet of the cross, Lord, we will place them at Jesus, and we will find the answers there, Lord, help us to do that this morning, and we just ask, Lord, that uh, you help us just to worship you with a whole mind, and a whole heart, Lord, and with all of our strength, and we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and stand and work and worship this
God, let's pray together. Lord, we thank You. You have blessed us. You have given us so much. And Lord, as we return a portion of those blessings back to You, Father, we pray that You would use it to further and strengthen Your kingdom here at Leatherwood and to, in our community and in our world. And we just thank You and praise You. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh 
saying um, I had the opportunity to be a part of Generosity Feed yesterday. It was a program in, in Clarion and there were several volunteers from here at the church and uh, about 400 volunteers from Clarion County showed up to do something in one place and uh, we were able to pack 11,200 meals that will go to kids that are hungry in 
uh, all of the schools in the county. So uh, they will be uh, taken to the blessing backpack groups that do those for the individual schools and they'll be distributed through that. And I had the, the opportunity to be a team leader and my team consisted mostly of eighth grade civic students at Red Bank Valley High School, uh, members of our church, and we had a couple other people that joined us as well, but uh, that was a, a really good day yesterday and a really good thing, um, and I believe they're going to plan it again uh, for an, another time, and so I hope that you get involved with uh, doing that uh, as it comes through uh, again of the opportunity. Anybody else have a praise? What's God been doing good this week? Yes, my owl. Awesome. Else with the praise. Yes, Tom. Uh, well, praise for safety in the last 16 days. Uh, with no mechanical breakdown or issues. No close calls. Okay. Okay, for safety on the motorcycle. I said, yes, Pam. And is advancing in the whatever, stuff. Is she here? Yes. Okay. Do you have your belt buckle? I wanted to compare belt buckles this morning. <laughs> yours, look, yours look better. <laughs> Kendall uh, won uh, her, uh, ra her barrel race at the rodeo, and so she qualified for Vegas National Finals in barrel racing. Uh, so congratulations. Yes, Jess, and then Donovan, I'll get to you next. Um, so we had a great weekend. Sydney did awesome. We both had good runs and we're um, very safe and it was just a great experience. And uh, we just happened to run into a couple of the um, local ministers from the area and they actually spent some time with us and those pictures of the kids and got to know them a little bit and just kind of encouraged us and encouraged us to keep, keep Jesus at the center of everything. And, it was just, you know, it was one of those God moments that it just it still gives me chills. It was a, it's a great experience. Okay. Go on, then. today. Uh, if you didn't get the chance to come, you can still start next week, but I haven't had a chance to talk to all the teachers, but I know that our class seemed to go pretty well, and they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't kill me in the process. Uh, uh, but uh, we are having a great time at Sunday school. Anybody else? Yes, Ellen. God is awesome. Colleen? Yes, Fern. Well, I had a great 
surprise this morning and the praise that my sister and Clayton and their, hum, uh, their family came to church. Okay. Almost full today. Not quite, but we're getting there. Yes, Kim. Yeah, Kim uh, had, could hardly walk yesterday. Her back was so bad, and uh, the praise that she's able to be here, and it wasn't even just the drugs that did it. <laughs> yes, Ed. We're uh, uh, praying for traveling mercies. Lois and I are leaving for Japan this week to visit uh, Jay. That's a traveling mercies. And then also prayers for the people of uh, the flooding of the, the hurricane zone that the Bahamas in particular was just devastating. Any other prayer requests this morning? Yes. Uh, not a prayer request. I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone that has ever left the above a ride, has ever offered one to me, to Donovan. I just don't want it to go unnoticed because I don't think I have ever missed a Sunday or had a Sunday where I didn't have somebody offered or to the church. And I'm just so very grateful and thankful. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Amber. So I was just going to say your name. Go ahead and share. Funding for my drugs. Okay. So uh, Janice got a uh, diagnosis as well this week. And uh, uh, her treatments will start on Monday, did you say? No, not till we get funding for, a, for it. Okay. So whenever the funding starts, so we're, we're praying for funding for her treatments. Yes, Wendy. Um, our exchange student, Anna, her mother, her name is Nidia, Nidia. She went to Venezuela and got her and brought her up here, and she's doing poorly. Okay. Yes, Grant. Okay, other prayers for Tally. Anybody with an unspoken request this morning? 
Um, we did have a, a request um, for uh, Larry. We're going to lay hands on him and, and be praying over him and his his health and his uh, uh, journey with all of this uh, cancer and, and things and that uh, are in his body. Anybody else that would like to, to be prayed over this morning um, can come forward at this time. And we're asking our church family to, to gather around them. We're going to anoint them uh, with oil and uh, just uh, pray over them this morning. Lord, that causes this healing to come. We pray that it comes 
and it comes completely, Lord, in her life and in her body. Lord, that, that funding would not be an issue, but Lord, that, it, that if medicine is needed, Lord, that it would come and it would be fully paid for, and, and Lord, that there would be, be nothing that is owed on her head. And Father God, we are just uh, releasing a healing in her life and her body, Lord, and, and we're asking and calling for you to come and to be the provider of that healing. Lord, only you can save and only you can heal. And so, Lord, we cry out to you and ask for you to come into her. Fill her up. Lord, whatever is going on in her lungs, this vasculitis, Lord, we, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we, we ask that you would come and fill up her lungs, fill up her body with your breath. And it's in your name, Lord, that we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. think about all of those that were mentioned here today. It's almost too many to even begin to name, but Lord, you have heard every request. You have heard every praise. Lord, you have heard every one who is sick and needing a touch from you. And so, Lord, we lift them up. We place them in your hands. And Lord, we ask for you to move in a mighty way. Lord, our same prayer is for the sermon time today that you would have your way in this place and move mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, this time the children are dismissed for Children's Church. You know, I learned something this week. Um, did you know that popular mute movies that you see in the movie theaters didn't always have the same title in the theaters that they had when the script was originally written? I didn't know that. I just assumed they started with a title uh, from the beginning and, and they went with it. To, and, but uh, there are many popular movies that uh, somewhere along the line when the script was written and when the movie was released, they changed their name. Uh, like in 2012, how many of you saw the Disney film Brave? Anybody see that one? It was originally supposed to be called The Bear and the Bow. After the book, I believe it was. But Brave, I think, was a little catchier. And, and it's not the only Disney movie. In 2006, there was a Disney movie to re be released called Route 66. But they changed the name to Cars. And uh, it became a, a classic but I see some of you grew up in the 1970s. How many of you grew up around the 1970s that are in that area? Era? Uh, but the movie Rocky, one of the greatest movies of, of this, the late 70s, was chosen, the name was chosen to replace The Contender. And the, the, the title Alien was chosen to replace the original title, which was supposed to be Star Beast. I kind of like that one a little better. And Saturday Night Fever, anybody remember that one? Was supposed to be called The Tribal Rights of the New Saturday Night. Just a, just a little different. But in the 80s, the same thing can be said. I, I'm a child of the 80s. I love 80s movies. That's my favorite decade of movies, I think. But uh, The Breakfast Club was supposed to be called The Lunch Bunch. E.T. was supposed to be called Night Skies, and Back to the Future was supposed to be called Spaceman from Pluto. <laughs> Go figure that out. But even all-time classics, does anybody know what the original title to Casablanca was? Everybody Comes to Rick's was the original title of that. 2001, A Space Odyssey was supposed to be called How the Solar Space Was Won, and Some Like It Hot 
was supposed to be called Not Tonight, Josephine. <laughs> so why do I tell you all this? Well, we've uh, decided that we were going to start a new series on the book of 1 Corinthians. And as I've gone through this, the, 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 the studying over this, the scripture, I think I've changed the title of this series about six or seven times because it just, it just seemed like God was pulling something out of, of the book every time I read it. And, and so I have a few rejected titles of the new sermon series that we're going to be doing. The first one was 1 Corinthians, Divided We Fall. Because it had, Paul has a lot to share about how a unified church is, is a necessity and, and, and you can't be divided a, a, as a church and succeed. Or another thing, 1 Corinthians, I saw it, is where church and culture collide. What happens when you get too much culture into the church? And see, there's a, a, a rift there and, and, and that could be a, 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 a message or a title of a series on 1 Corinthians. I think this was my favorite one. 1 Corinthians. Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> there are a lot of, of tough, tough topics in 1 Corinthians and, and things that, that can step on toes. And so I'm going to suggest that maybe for some messages you bring a helmet along with you. Because it, it, it may be a, a little bit rough, but we're going to get through it. I, I promise you that. 1 Corinthians. When Vegas comes to church... <laughs> you read some of these stories in there and you're like, that was going on in a church. I cannot believe that that was happening. But in the end, I simply came with, to the conclusion that we were going to entitle with this. 1 Corinthians to the church. Because Paul is writing all of this uh, for the goodness of the church at Corinth. He was telling them just what they needed to hear. And Paul was saying, you need this, and you need this, and you need this, and we're going to get there if you just follow along with me. And, and, and as I read the conditions that were, were in that church that he was addressing, and I took a look at the, the, the church that's in America today, let me just say, I don't think that there's any church that more closely resembles the American church today than that that was in, first, that was in Corinth. And so it is a message that is for us, even though it's not addressed to us. So as we go over this 1 Corinthians series, this stuff is for the church. This stuff is to the church. And as a Christian, we need this information because it's vital. You know, I don't think that Paul is purposely stepping on toes. And I don't think that Paul's trying to be provocative with some of this stuff. He's just giving them what they need to hear. And so let's keep that in an open mind and an open heart that, that sometimes there's things that we need to hear and we don't want to hear. And so let's keep our eyes and our ears open. So as we begin, I want to take a look at the first words, starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And we're going to have a little introduction to 1 Corinthians from these words. And it says this. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sacrificed in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Him you have been enriched in every way. With all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you, therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, I get the easy job today. Because Paul starts by pointing out what the good points of are the ch of the church in Corinth. See, I, I stuck tough next week with what do you do when there's divisions in the church. I'm taking the good points. So Paul is telling, I'm writing you this letter 
And I'm starting, as every good letter does, when you're writing with a complaint, you start with the good things. And so Paul was saying, this church, here is what you are doing well. Here is what you are doing good. Here is how you should model yourselves after the church at Corinth. So before we take a closer look at that, let's, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can see the good at this church in Corinth. And Lord, teach us how to be like them in these ways. Father God, show us how that we can be a church that displays some of these great characteristics that this church in Corinth did. And so Lord, we just thank you and we love you and it's in your name we pray. Amen. So the first thing that he says to the church in Corinth is that you are a church that enriches. You are a church that enriches. And there's two specific ways. They enrich people through the knowledge that they give and through the speech that they have. So if you look up the word enrich in the dictionary, you'll see this definition. To improve or enhance the quality or value of something. To enrich is to improve or enhance the quality or value of something. So when you enrich something, when, it, when you make it better, you add an improvement upon it, when you enrich something, you're bringing the fullness to it. When you enrich something, when you look at the word in the Greek, it means that you have a nice house and you add really nice furniture to it. You're enriching it. It's already very nice. It's already very good. You have a, 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 a nice house, but then you put the finest furnishings in it. That's what it means to enrich in the Greek. Enriching something adds value and beauty and richness to it. So in the scripture, we're told that the church in Corinth excelled in bringing enrichment to the people that were in it in every way. So let's take a look back at our scripture. In verse 4 it says... I always thank my God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in Him you have been enriched in every way. With all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. So the enriching that, that he is talking about here does not refer to monetary value. Because one of the first things we think of when you become enriched is to become wealthy. So how do you enrich my pocket? You put money in it. But that's not the enriching that we're talking about here. We're talking about that this church was full of people who were enriched by God who took that enrichment and their knowledge and their speech and they passed it on to other people who came into their church building. These people had allowed themselves to become bettered by God and bettered by Scripture and, and they took those words and that knowledge that they were given by God and they shared it with everyone who came in the doors. The first thing that it talks about is that they were enriched in their speech. There was something about the way that they talked that lifted people up. And it was probably something to do with not complaining or grumbling. But there was something about the words that came out of their mouth that they just couldn't help but pick people up and encourage people and, 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 and cause them to, 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 to feel good. It was amazing yesterday at Generosity Fees when, when, when we're, we're going through the thing, I, I just walk down the line and you say, hey, nice job, keep it up, keep going. And we were only going for like two minutes and everyone's like, oh, oh yeah, yay, let's keep going, let's keep doing this, let's, let's make, let's make 11,200 meals. And it only took 45 minutes. When you get 400 people together with the same task and the same goal and you enrich them, good things happen. So enriching speech is something that builds things up instead of tears them down. It's a messages that lift up instead of drag down. I think of, of people that I know that use their words very carefully so that they can add value to the lives of the people that they speak to. 
And so when you walked into the church at Corinth, I imagine what you got was way more than, hello, how are you? You probably got something like, I'm glad you're here today. You really look nice. You know, I was just hearing in the scripture this week about this and that, and I want to share that with you. It went way beyond the surface to building up the inner person. They were going to lovingly give you inspiring words to help build you up. They fed you words that were going to enrich your life because they had those words themselves from the Lord. But that wasn't just enough. It wasn't just speech that built people up. They also gave them enriching knowledge. This church had received so much good information from the Lord now through the years that they, it, was, it was like we talked about with Scripture coming out of your pores last week. They were so filled up with knowledge from the Lord that they could just give it out and, and hand it out. And, and, and they were going to build up your knowledge. You weren't just going there to, to hear someone talk for an hour and then go home. You went there because you knew you were going to learn something and you were going to get some knowledge into your life. You went there to grow. And every time you walked through the doors, I imagine that you were, you said, huh, I never thought about it that way before. Huh, I never thought things like this before. You see, the church in Corinth did not exist for you just to get your religious fix. They didn't cater to past or religious traditions, and this church definitely was not there to entertain you. This church was there to build you up in speech and in knowledge. And when you left this church, you probably felt like you had just been where you needed to be the most. Have you ever felt like that sometimes when you leave church? Like, man, I didn't want to come here this morning at all, but man, I'm glad I did. And we can't always put our finger on why that is, but if you get an encouraging message and, and you learn something that you didn't know when you came into that place, and they, that happens every time you leave that place, you're going to want to go back. You left feeling full and fulfilled. Feeling like you had not wasted a second of your time there. You left there lifted up and richer because of what you received there that day. This is what they were best at because Paul mentions it first. And I think here at Leatherwood we can take a page out of their book. Do you know how many people will come here on Sunday morning if every time people leave here they feel lifted up and encouraged? How many of you come back because you feel lifted up and encouraged? Tell a friend, please. Because if you, they come and they feel lifted up and fulfilled and enriched, there's not a building in the area that will be able to hold all the people that need that. And if they come and learn lessons that they did not know, and they, they come and they develop relationships, we need to use our words to build people up and use the knowledge that we have of God to do the same. I hope that you leave here feeling each week that you give, gain something good and feeling enriched, but I hope that you also pass it on equally as much. Because it can help enrich the lives of so many more people who are searching for meaning and value and truth. So the first thing that they did, they were a church that was full of enrichment and they enriched people through their speech and through the knowledge that was given. But Paul doesn't stop there. He also called them a church full of spiritual gifts. A church full of spiritual gifts. Here it is from the scripture. It says this about the church in Corinth. Therefore, verse 7, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. I don't think we got that fully. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. So what does that look like to not lack any spiritual gift? It looks like two things. It looks like, number one, it's a church in which all of the gifts of the Spirit are welcome and in use. And I'm not just talking like three of them. And I'm not just talking like seven of them. I'm, there's like 41 different gifts through the Scriptures. And all of them are in use because all of them are needed. So the people that had the gifts of hospitality, they were being hospitable to people. 
And the people that had the gift of teaching, they were teaching people. And the people that had the gift of prophecy were, were, were speaking prophecies over people. Even the people who had the gifts of tongues were using that gift to glorify God in its proper place. They were not lacking any spiritual gift. You know, this was not a church where you would leave and you could say, well, good, but the worship wasn't very good. You ever heard that? Or someone saying, well, that, that church sure has a lot of teachers, but uh, they all like to hear them spell speak. That, that you, you couldn't leave that church and not feel like, wow, God is using people there. And that's the second part about this. A church who, that does not lack any spiritual gift, that means that every person in the church was using their spiritual gift. There was not a one who was just sitting there waiting for, for somebody else to use their gifts. You know, as a church in the United States, we tend to go by the 80-20 strategy. You know what the 80-20 strategy is, right? 80% of the people do 20% of the work. Oh wait, that's not right. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And, and, and I would say that number is slipping further and further to 90-10. And in some churches, can I get an amen from Clayton maybe? It's 99-1. We pay the pastor for that. So we don't have to do that. We need your gifts. If I could do it all on my own, believe me, I would. It would, be, it would be much easier to have a church of one person. Me. That's it. You, you could have a church of one person. The church of Andy. You could do everything yourself. Wouldn't it be awesome? It would be great. But God has called us into a body because we need each other. Because I don't have all the gifts. Andy has almost all the gifts, but not all of the gifts. Larry doesn't have all of the gifts. And so you need all of these people to come together so that you have all of the gifts in the same room, under the same roof, and you can move in the Spirit in the way that it was intended. Amen. It was not meant to be a 99-1. It was not meant to be a 90-10. It was not meant to be an 80-20. It was meant to be a 100-100. 100% of the people using 100% of the gifts that they were given from the Lord. That's what it, it says here when I read that. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift. All of the gifts were in use and all of the people were using their gifts. That's what it means not to lack. I can't imagine what kind of exciting service this would have made on a Sunday. Because usually it's a small handful of people that use their good gifts to glorify the Lord. But the, the wonderful thing is that the Lord has blessed us with more and more gifted people over the years to use. And maybe your gift is not even to be used on a Sunday morning. But it's still needed. Maybe your gift is to be used on a Wednesday morning at your home. But it's still needed. We need all of the people using all of the gifts to unlock the potential of the church. We all have a part to play and worship was never intended to be a spectator sport. God has gifted every one of us through the Holy Spirit with unique gifts and abilities that need to be put into use. And, and I want to see what a fully functioning church looks like. In which no gift is lacking and no one is not using the gift that they were given. So what did this church do well? They were a church that was full of spiritual gifts. And lastly, we find that this church in Corinth, that they, would, they were told that they would remain firm to the end. They were not in this for the short term. They were all in this for the long term. Here it is from our scripture, starting in verse 8. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
See, this was not a church that was going to disappear. This was not a, a, a church that was in danger of shutting their doors. God had seen the good things that they did, the faith that they had, and He said as a result, He will keep them firm to the end. There may be times where they want to quit. There may be times when they want to pull up shop and go down the, the, the road and see what this other church has to offer. But He has said, I will keep you firm to the end. The church in Corinth is resolute that they will not stop doing what needs done there to spread the gospel and to win converts to Christ. And see, we need to develop a, a similar type of faith in our church. We need to all be on board. We need to be fully committed. We still have a great commission in front of us that tells us that we need to, to, to go out and, and we need to, to, to make disciples. I love how that doesn't say that we need to win converts. We need to go out and make disciples. That's much harder work. It's a big job, but we have to stand firm. We have to have faith that God is always up to something. And because He hasn't come back yet, it means that there's still work to be done here. And we need to declare our resolve for following God and for being a part of His church here at Leatherwood. I believe more and more every day that it's no accident that you are here. Amen. That's right. You were born for this. You were made for this opportunity right here and right now. God saw you when you were not yet formed in your womb and decided that when you were X many years old, you would be here at Leatherwood and you would have this purpose. I can't tell you what that is. Only you hearing from God can know what that is. But I can tell you that you are needed at Leatherwood. And we want to do all that we can, can, can to unlock your potential and unleash you into the church and into the community with the Holy Spirit. We want this to, to be a place where people come in and they feel welcome, but they also leave knowing that they have been enriched because someone spoke into their life. And someone gave them a bit of knowledge that they needed. We also want this to be a place where you are free to find and use your spiritual gifts. It may take a couple of chances for you to find your spiritual gift. That's okay. But you are a special part and a special gift to this church. And no one else can do what you can do for this place. And we also need people who will stand together in faith and stand firm until Jesus comes back. I'm telling you, there are so many things trying to divide us. That try to drag us apart. Drag us away from the faith. You cannot let it. Make up your mind that you are in it to the end. So my question to you is, what part will you play? What will people say about you? Man, I'm glad Brian was here. Because there was no better public speaker than Brian when it came to testimonies. I mean, still growing into that one, but it's off to a good start. There is a word for you. There is knowledge for you. There is a gift for you and you just have to step into it. What will people say about you and your importance to the church here when you walk into the destiny God has for you? Would you pray with me? Lord, we come to you and Lord, we are asking right now that you enrich us with a word of knowledge. Tell us something about ourselves that we don't even know yet. Lord, use somebody else here to build us up just where we need build up. Lord, tell us what part we are to play in the future of your church here at Leatherwood. 
God, you have big plans. You have big dreams. Lord, help us to be a church that chases after those things. And Lord, does everything that is in within our, our power to make it happen. Lord, help us to stand firm to the end. Lord, we thank you for the good examples that this church at Corinth laid out for us in the Scripture. And Lord, we pray that we would all take something home from this that will help to build up and enrich the church here and, and other people's lives that are, that are around us. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We changed this last song just a little bit before the service because uh, one of the songs that reflected what we are becoming as a body of believers. We are one church. We are one body. We are one in the Spirit. And so we need to come together and sing this. Would you stand with me and sing this? We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk. You know, 67 year old Dorothy Parker did not think that she was in the right place or it was the right time to have a heart attack in 2003. But her heart attack began mid air on a cross country flight. Of all the times and places, you would say that's the wrong time and the wrong place to have a heart attack. But when the stewardess asked if there was a doctor on board, 15 cardiologists stood up on their way to a medical convention. And they gave her the best care possible until they were able to land and Dorothy survived and thrived the ordeal. However, the next few months, I won't promise you there won't be times where you don't feel uncomfortable. And I promise that you won't hear the word and go, well, I never heard that in church before because you might never have heard it in church. But I am promising you, you are in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. God has you here and in the here and now, and you have a vital role to play. So I'm asking you to come back each week expecting to hear from God. And guess what? You will when you come expecting that. So go out this week. And be the church to someone. Invite someone along with you and say, Hey, come here because when you leave, you'll be enriched. Come here because when, when you're here, you can, you can find your spiritual gifts and you're able to use them. When you are here, you'll learn about the faith and standing firm to the end. Go and do that this week. You are dismissed.